you see the weird thing of micro strategies decoupling from Bitcoin, yeah. mm. which is equity flow versus crypto flow, which adds to this, there's something else going on. Mm. And then, you know, looking, because I've got an asset management firm um, that invests in uh, uh, crypto hedge funds, and speaking to everybody, there are no flows because everyone's waiting for the range to break. Mm -hmm. So there's all the family offices like, well, we just want to wait for things to start being confirmed. Mm -hmm. And it's the election. You know, we need we want to see what happens with the election. It's basically everybody's waiting for everybody else. And we don't really have a catalyst. I mean, all the catalysts are in place. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's left? Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now, guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us. And we read every comment. And the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Real Vision founder and CEO Raul Powell discusses the upcoming U.S. election and the wave of new money waiting to enter the market if a breakout is confirmed. Everyone's looking for the confirmation of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and then everybody's going to get out the risk curve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because look, if we've got the banana zone, everything's going to rip. Everyone knows what the game is. You want the beta. Yeah, everybody's going to want the beta. And, you know, so where do we're we get already the seeing it. You can barely keep memes underwater. Well, memes yeah. are going, yeah. And you can memes barely memes are going. Stuff like Sui, you just yeah. can't keep these things down. Yeah. So you can see that in the market's kind of getting ready to do all this stuff. And the moment Bitcoin breaks 70,000, I mean, God, these memes are going to go ETH, for now. ETH. Two weeks ago, and it was, it's probably 50 charts of liquidity, financial conditions, um, historical pattern matching, technical analysis, you know, everything from, you know, if you look at Bollinger Bands of, you know, volatility, you know, all of these things have always led to a big breakout. So you've kind of got every box ticked. I mean, everything. And, you know, China have started to do the whole global stimulus game, and that will spread to everybody. Yes, at the end of the quarter, uh, the Fed saw a draw of liquidity because of the bank funding stuff. But that goes away. So I don't know. The only so thing. For me, it's just a matter of time. It's just, if you go down the list, it's really interesting. When you see the list of the biggest holders of the ETF, hmm. yeah, there's some RAA firms and whatever. Most of it. It's the converter ARP guys. Yeah. It's all of them are the ARP guys. So they're either ARBing using the ETF because they can get um, prime broking on it, which you can't get on Bitcoin very easily. So they use it for prime broking, and then they're ARBing the futures or the perps. Right. Yeah. Uh, There's no actual real new money that's come in yet then. Yeah, so. there is some. You can go down the list. But yeah. when you look at it, it's all millennium. It's all, all the same players. Okay. And they're just extracting cash from the cash and carry it's if the liquidity picture <coughs> doesn't match what we're all expecting you know the, the general thesis that i brought about was the fact that we need to refire the debts and that liquidity has been cyclical and it's been measurable and we've got a huge amount of debt coming yes gdp growth is decent right now so that does pay for a lot of those interest payments but interest payments are very high so for some reason not only the US doesn't provide liquidity, because if you go back to the the sixteen seventeen bull run, the US had raised rates once, went on pause, didn't do anything with liquidity. The Chinese did it all, and then the UK because of Brexit. And so it'd have to be all of them not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But the Chinese have already made it clear they're yeah. going to have to do something. So that's the difficulty I see is, is I don't see how nobody's going to do it because mm. inflation's imploding in Europe right now. It's just the Europeans are going to keep going. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing I can see is for some reason that whole liquidity story, the cyclicality doesn't work, but it's been working perfectly yeah. since the bottom in 2022. Yeah, yeah. And really, when I look at the patterns and stuff with GMI, it's like I'm complaining because it didn't match last week <laughs> yes you know really with a bit of wiggling around because of flows or whatever whether it breaks out this week or in two weeks time three weeks time makes no difference but it 
it should be that order of magnitude in terms of time. It's like, it's right here, right it's now. Guys, um, yeah. MicroStrategy co-founder Michael Saylor has jokingly stated that the only thing that is better than Bitcoin is actually more Bitcoin. To support his point, he attached a chart showcasing the performance of MicroStrategy shares since the company's adoption of its Bitcoin strategy. The business intelligence firm has vastly outperformed the magnificent seven companies, including such big names as Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Its shares have surged by a whopping 1,620%, outstripping every S&P 500 company. The closely followed index is up 73% over the same period of time. MicroStrategy is currently worth $43 billion, breathing down Coinbase's neck. Tour de Meester, advisor to Blockstream, recently drew parallels between the two companies, arguing that they represent the battle of two archetypes. He claims that MicroStrategy is a hedgehog that knows one big thing. Meanwhile, Coinbase is a fox that is busy distracting itself with too many strategies. This is, of course, a reference to MicroStrategy's Bitcoin maximalist approach that rejects the idea of investing in altcoins. Saylor has famously stated that there is no second best when it comes to cryptocurrency investing. Meanwhile, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, who was originally highly skeptical of altcoins, has abandoned Bitcoin maximalism. So the layer twos obviously took away from the layer one. Okay, fine. But what I'm thinking is really being built is something that scales much larger by having the layer twos, and then they're going to go to this ZK roll-ups, whatever it's going to be. But they have a roadmap. And I think basically they've overbuilt infrastructure um, but where we are right now. And that's what it is. While Solana and Sui and other stuff are seeing the pickup in activity, ETH has basically built out enormous amount of block space. And as the market grows, I think, you know, ETH, because it's security and all of the other stuff, will attract more flows. Mm -hmm. But it's probably going to underperform this cycle underperforms Solana, but I still think it outperforms Bitcoin. I look at that cross a lot. That cross perfectly works with the ISM. So as the business cycle picks up, that's alt season. Now, why is that? Pretty simple, because everyone has a bit more money. Yeah. Because as soon as the ISM picks up, still below 40, 40 uh, below 50. So this is, it actually says a big part of the economy is still slow. And another part is racing ahead. <laughs> so that means that corporate earnings are still slow. That means people's paychecks are slow. That means the bloke who owns the sandwich shop down the road, earnings are still a bit slow. All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. When it starts picking up, that compounding effect of the business cycle means more disposable income, means more investing. Mm -hmm. And then people go out the risk curve. So we still haven't got to that point. So we're still, and that's another reason maybe this whole breakout from the banana zone hasn't happened, is it really happens when the RSM crosses 50 to the upside. That's like a big signal. The term Uptober comes from past performances, with Bitcoin averaging 22.9% gains in this month since 2013. Some years, like 2021, saw even bigger gains like the 40% jump. But this year, it's been rocky, to say the least. By October 12, Bitcoin was barely holding on to $63,000, and that's after a mild 8% rise in September. Those expecting a rally have reason to be nervous. A lot of factors are threatening Bitcoin's chance for a true October comeback, a break from the streak. High open interest in Bitcoin futures is one of the biggest challenges. Right now, futures contracts are sitting at $35.3 billion. Historically, high levels like this point to market peaks. What happens next? Increased volatility is almost guaranteed. When traders start to take profits, we usually see corrections, and that could drag Bitcoin down. On top of that, spot market activity has been pretty weak. After a solid buying spree following Bitcoin's price correction in September, that energy has faded. Traders are staying cautious and buyers aren't rushing in. It's a signal that the market could be about to stall. Meanwhile, the spot market is cooling. After the sharp dip in recovery in early September, spot investors were quick to scoop up BTC, but that buying momentum has flattened out. The market isn't seeing the kind of aggressive purchases that were driving prices before. That's another warning sign. Fewer buyers mean less support for prices. And when the market becomes balanced between buyers and sellers, prices often stay flat or even start to drop. Adding to this pressure is a change in overall investor sentiment. Many investors are starting to take profits, 
particularly those who saw modest gains in September. The Fear and Greed Index has been sitting comfortably in fear territory, at 37 points. Profit-taking is happening, and when realized profit-slash-loss ratios rise like this, it just means more selling pressure is coming. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!